On behalf of our team at RDIAC, we would like to welcome John Jean Battista, co founder and director of software at Limbus AI Incorporated. Limbus AI provides software solutions for cancer radiation therapy. Their mission is to build machine learning based software to improve the efficiency and clinical workflows in the planning of cancer radiation treatments. We are so thankful to John for his time and the opportunity to hear about his story, his educational background, and all about this cutting edge technology. After you watch this presentation, we encourage you to complete the student survey found on our website at www.rdiec to be automatically entered for a $50 gift card drawn at the end of every month. Again, we would like to thank John as we know his presentation will help students in their quest to make inf informative decisions about their future. Take it away, John. Sure, thank you so much for that introduction. Yeah, I'd just like to talk a bit about the background on Limbus AI and my experience as an engineer previously and now, uh, I guess, a tech entrepreneur and startup founder. Um, one second. Okay, so a little bit about myself. Um, so I did my education at the University of Regina, uh, Bachelor of Applied Science in Electronic Systems Engineering. Um, and with that, I did a, I did the co-op program. Um, so I had you know five years in total of university and um, four four month work terms. Two of those I did at IQ Metrics, which is a local software company here in Regina. And then I did two work terms at Sask Energy in the SCADA and automation department. And then post-graduation, I worked two years at Sask Energy uh, in automation and was effectively working on kind of the systems that move gas throughout our pipeline system. Um, and now, you know, with that experience, I, I got my professional engineering designation through APEX. Um, and during my time at Sask Energy, um, you know, on the side, I, I co-founded Limbus AI. And today I'm working on that full time. So I'll talk a bit about the, the origin story for Limbus and kind of give you a background on the product and the industry that we're in. Um, but my job today is, is director of software at Limbus. So my job description effectively is manage and work on product development. Um, so we're a software company, so I'll write code and software and I'll work with our other engineers to build products. Um, I manage and oversee our business and business development. So I work closely with lawyers and accountants to make sure that you know, we're following the law and we're not running out of money. <laughs> and I, I manage and oversee quality and regulatory objectives. So Limbus is a, a healthcare company. So there's you know certain oversights and regulations that we have to abide by. So it kind of makes for a unique um, business experience having that extra layer of, of responsibility. So I'll talk a bit about that too. And then kind of my, my number one job description right now is building and leading teams. So we're a growing company and we're hiring all the time. I think, I think we hired you know, four people in the last three months. Um, so I'm always interviewing people and trying to find you know, new employees to help us grow the business. Um, so let me say, I'll give you some background on what we do and uh, you know, what product we're actually making. Um, so the space that we're in is, is cancer radiation treatment. And this is basically the process of of delivering radiation beams into a patient to treat some disease directly. Um, so you can think of like chemotherapy for cancer as kind of treating the whole body at once. Like you're injecting something that is, um, you know, targeting the cancer throughout the body. Radiation is kind of the opposite of that. It's, it's very, very specific and targeted. So you might know that there's, you know, a brain tumor at a specific location in the brain and you want to target it with a certain dose of radiation exactly. Um, so that's what radiation treatment is. And the process for actually having radiation treatment is, is kind of three steps. So it starts with getting a CT and MRI scan. Um, so you have to capture images basically so that you know exactly where the disease is in the body. So if there's a brain tumor, you would know um, where that is based on the MRI or CT. And those images go into this process called treatment planning. And this is basically where doctors or clinicians um, will look at the images and they'll determine you know, in order to, to treat this tumor or disease, I need to deliver this much radiation dose in this specific area. So they'll kind of optimize this treatment and, and build a plan for the specific patient. And then that treatment plan goes into the machine, which is usually called a linear accelerator. And that basically spins around the patient in 3D and delivers the radiation dose. And so this process will repeat for how many courses of radiation that's prescribed to the patient. So Limbus AI, our mission and kind of what we're working on is basically to use software and machine learning to improve that treatment planning process. So we're kind of working within that specific domain. 
And the first problem that we're solving, our first product is, is looking at the problem of contouring organs and planning volumes. So like I said, each patient gets these CT and MRI images and you're using that to plan where the radiation dose is delivered. And one of the steps of working with these images is to, is to actually draw all of the organs and tumors in the body. And the reason you have to do that is, is so that you can target the radiation at the tumor and avoid hitting the healthy structures. So you wanna treat the disease, you don't wanna you know, fry someone's eyeballs. That's, that's kind of how uh, important it is. And so this is a problem we're solving because it's a bottleneck in the radiation treatment planning process. It takes a clinician like anywhere from 30 to 90 minutes per patient just to draw these structures. Uh, and because of that, it's significant cost to the healthcare system. The other thing is in certain, you know, developing markets and even just busy hospitals in North America, they don't have enough clinicians to do this task efficiently. And so treatments actually get delayed. Um, so it's kind of a bottleneck in the process. So our product, Limbus Contour, what we're working on now is it's effectively like a Windows application that takes in CT and MRI scans, applies uh, machine learning models or AI, and produces you know, high quality organ contours. So it's basically drawings of organs overlaid on top of CT and MRI scans. And these get reviewed by the clinicians and, and they'll get edited uh, because it's not perfect, um, but it saves them you know, enough time that it's useful in practice. Um, so a bit, bit more about the product. Um, we're, we're testing the accuracy of this through uh, clinical studies. And so we published a number of studies that show that the output of our software, that the AI or machine learning is you know, as accurate as human experts. Um, and there's always a bit of variability between how each person does contouring. Um, so we're kind of within that, that variability. Um, but this, this needs to be accurate or else it wouldn't be useful. Um, there was actually some technology on the market to solve this problem probably 10 or 15 years ago, but it didn't use machine learning and AI. And what the clinicians found is that, you know, if, if this isn't good enough, they'll just start over and, and draw the contours from scratch. So in order for it to save time, it has to require like very minimal editing. And uh, we're kind of showing that through our research. And then through that research and user feedback, we, we've been able to make the claim that using Limbus is about 80% faster than the conventional manual contouring workflow. So that time savings is really the benefit of this product. We're allowing clinicians to do this task faster. They can treat more patients and patients get treated faster. Um, so primarily right now we're working on CT scans and, and our goal with this product is just to continue to build out the amount of organs and structures and, and images that we can work with. Um, so you'll see some examples here. Um, we're covering basically all the, the cancer treatment sites like head and neck, breast, lung, et cetera. And like I said, primarily CT, but we're also um, shipping our first uh, contouring models for MRI. And we're looking at new future applications already. So we kind of have this basic product and we could build on it by, um, you know, creating more and more organ models and, and using more and more images. So I'll just give you an example of what this looks like in practice. Um, you'll see the machine learning or AI generated contours scrolling through a variety of different treatment sites. Um, and you'll see like each site has, you know, a number of different structures that are relevant to the treatment plan. Um, so there's kind of a specific guideline for what organs need to be contoured for each um, like anatomical region. And each CT scan can have anywhere from, you know, 50 to 300 slices. So these are 3D scans, um, but they're represented as 2D slices. Um, so with the, just the number of individual images in a single scan, you can see why it would take someone so long to draw all of these by hand. Um, so this is really what the time savings is. It's just um, creating these good quality contours out of the box and then they can be edited, quickly reviewed and then used to treat the patient. So that's the product. Um, now I wanna go into some background on the company and, and kind of how we got here. Um, so it all started in, in 2017. Uh, my brother, Dr. Joshua, was working as a radiation oncologist at BC Cancer Agency. So he was doing his medical residency and he was doing this task directly, manually contouring uh, organs and planning treatments for patients. And he realized, you know, this is a very time consuming task. There, there should be a better way to do this. Um, so he did some research and, and found some previous attempts to make this technology real. Uh, like I talked about before, they didn't use machine learning or AI, so the outputs weren't good. Um, and they never really got traction in the industry. Um, but in 2017, machine learning and AI was becoming much more prevalent. So Josh kind of had the idea that, you know, this would probably be a good application for that technology. And 
Uh, he just so happened to be my brother and I have a good background in, in software engineering. And then our childhood friend Carter, uh, also from Regina, has a master's in computational neuroscience and he was doing AI and machine learning in the advertising industry. So we kind of had like this perfect initial team already to, to, to work on something like this. Um, so Josh basically gave us a data set of medical images and said, try to make something that can draw the border around the bladder. Um, so we started working on this proof of concept and this is all in our spare time. Um, Carter used his machine learning background to develop a very basic like proof of concept that just detected where a bladder was and draw a rough border around it. And I used my software background to build a very early application that just, you know, says, here's a folder of medical images. We'll apply this bladder model and produce some images to review. And very early on, we realized like, hey, this actually works. Like we, we can detect where the bladders are and we can draw borders around them fairly accurately. So at this point, we're thinking, you know, if this works on a bladder, maybe it'll work on eyeballs. Maybe it'll work on, you know, kidneys or hearts. Maybe, maybe we can just apply this to every you know, organ in the body and create something that's actually useful. Um, so fast forward to 2017, we're, we're still all working on this just in our spare time. Uh, and we figured, you know, we might as well like incorporate a company just so we can build this under something and not just as uh, three individuals. We had no intent of like commercializing or um, actually building a business. And that's kind of a this is story throughout this. We, we really never like intended to start a company. We just like wanted to work on cool technology and, and that kind of got us to the present. Um, but for the rest of 2017, we just continued to refine that technology. So like I said, we just started with one organ bladder uh, and we continued to build out until we had you know, all the relevant structures in, in the pelvis region. And um, the goal was basically just to you know, continue working on this until we have enough structures for the whole body that we could maybe release uh, a functional product. Um, and then in 2018, we caught the attention of a, a large vendor in this space. Uh, they make machines for treating the patient and also software to, to do the treatment planning. And they contracted us to develop AI models for dog and cat cancer treatments. So up until this point, we were only looking at like humans because uh, that's where Josh's expertise is as a radiation oncologist. Um, but we, we got the opportunity in 2018 to actually uh, work in the veterinary space. And that actually taught us a lot because there's a lot more variability in uh, CT and MRI scans between dog and cats than there is in humans. So like every, every human has like roughly the same body type and shape to an extent, but there's a huge difference between a Chihuahua and a Husky. So when we found that like our technology was applying correctly to a Chihuahua as it was to a Husky, we realized like this is gonna work incredibly well on, on humans if we can just continue to build the product up. And then that contract also uh, brought us a bit of revenue to kind of bootstrap the business further. So, for the rest of 2018, uh, our goal was basically now to, to actually commercialize this and try to build a business. Um, but we realized pretty quickly that this product is regulated. Um, so it's a medical device and you, you can't just build something and sell it with no oversight. Um, so we, we realized we'd have to get FDA approval and Health Canada approval, and there was gonna be certain roadblocks to actually getting this to market. And those roadblocks were gonna take money. So in 2018, we secured a $600,000 investment to commercialize this technology. Um, we also found an advisor in Dr. Carl Otto, and he joined our team as director of medical physics. Carl's kind of a legend in the radiation therapy industry. He's built two pretty impactful technologies. One is called VMAT. Um, he basically like invented a way to treat cancer patients in 3D with radiation, and that technology is used on thousands of patients per day. So he is, was pretty essential to our success and, and still is, uh, just in terms of like navigating this specific industry and um, guiding us on how to bring something like this to market. Uh, but with that investment in 2018, Carter and I were finally able to, to quit our jobs and work full time on this. So 2019, um, we, at this point, basically had a complete product in terms of the machine learning. So we could contour you know, organs throughout the body and we had an application that could integrate well with the clinical workflow. Um, and, and really the, the step at this point was just to test on actual patients. Um, so we partnered with BC Cancer Agency and deployed our software at, at two clinics in BC. And we began testing uh, on humans and using that to build out our, our FDA submission. So the majority of, of 2019 was basically working on that FDA submission. And with that investment, we were able to hire our first employees and 
Um, effectively, at this point, our, our goal was, was just go to market, get this to market. Once we have FDA approval, we'll hire sales staff and um, we'll start selling it and, and go from there. So um, those in-between years are really just refining the product and, and getting these regulatory approvals and, and continuing to build the team. So that's kind of the origin story. So fast forward to today. Um, so we went from kind of proof of concept, does this technology work? Then we went to like minimum viable product, which is you know, what's, what's the very most basic thing that we can build that shows that this will actually work in practice. Uh, then we had to execute, we had to get regulatory approvals. Uh, and then today we're kind of at the product market fit stage, which is basically, do you have customers that will actually pay for this? And, and do you have uh, a viable business? Um, so right now we have regulatory approvals in Canada, the US and Europe. So those are the markets that we're actively selling in. Um, we're installed in hundreds of clinics. We're running, I think over 1500 CT and MRI scans through Limbus uh, per week uh, and over 30,000 have been processed through Limbus per day. So uh, a ton of time savings actually realized by um, doctors and, and clinicians worldwide. Um, we published four studies that show the benefit of our technology in clinics. And we have multiple studies ongoing with, with new research partners internationally. And our team, which started out as, as three, uh, is now 10. And the employees that, that we have right now are mostly engineers, uh, data scientists. We have clinicians to help us label data and review you know, clinical data to, to build new machine learning models. Uh, and then, of course, we have medical physicists, sales and marketing to actually sell the product, and then quality and regulatory staff to make sure that we're bringing it to market in the most efficient way. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the, the background on Limbus and, and where we're at today. And now I want to talk a bit about the opportunities like at Limbus AI and in the, the general technology sector. So for us, these are kind of like the main um, five areas of the company that we're actively hiring in and that we need employees for all the time. So number one is engineering and design. So we're a software company. Um, so we're always hiring software engineers, computer scientists, data scientists, Machine learning uh, experts in particular right now are in extremely high demand. It's, it's very, very hard to find machine learning engineers in Saskatchewan. Um, and engineering design is, is basically always in demand in the tech sector. And it, it's kind of dependent on you know, what the startup is. For us, it's, it's software engineers. Um, but if the startup was in the ag tech space, it might be mechanical engineers or, or electrical engineers. Uh, but there's a ton of opportunities for engineering design in, in Saskatchewan and throughout Canada. Uh, second for us is sales and marketing. Um, so now that we we have a product and we we've kind of done the back the the bulk of like the upfront engineering work, our focus is really like how do we get this to market and and sell it as fast as possible. Um, so we need we need folks with a sales and marketing background, specifically like uh, industry sales and and business to business sales. Um, so those are those employees actually have been a little bit harder for us to find in Saskatchewan, but there's there's a ton of opportunity for that kind of work. Um, and then in our specific industry, um, there's a lot of careers available for quality and regulatory people. Um, so people that are familiar with the FDA regulations and Health Canada regulations. Um, so we have employees on staff that uh, basically just ensure that we're following all the applicable laws surrounding medical devices. And then, then clinical research, this is something you know very unique to Limbus AI. Most companies wouldn't have clinicians on staff, um, but we have you know, radiation therapists and radiation oncologists, and they oversee research partnerships and our relationships with hospitals and clinics. And they'll review clinical data and actually assist in like the development of uh, machine learning solutions. Um, so they review all the organ contours that we uh, capture from clinics and that we use to train our AI models. And then customer support's a big one for us now. Now that we have, you know, hundreds of clinics using Limbus, we need people that can interface with customers and make sure that they're having the best possible experience. We need people that are technical that can in install software and uh, support issues on, on Windows and other platforms. Um, so those are those are positions that we're actively hiring for too. Um, but there's there's lots more. I mean, this this list goes on and on. Uh, from from my perspective as, as someone that, that hires a lot of staff, we're basically hiring like whoever we need at any given time. But these are kind of the main five areas of focus for us right now. Okay, so I'll talk a bit about equipment we use. Um, so we're kind of a unique company in that we're mostly um, all remote employees, uh, even like prior to COVID. So we have a, a few employees in Regina um, and, and we work out of the Connexus Cultivator for those local employees. And that's a, a local startup tech incubator. So they provide a workspace and mentorship and some other benefits to us. 
Uh, and then we'll work from home, uh, you know, depending on the day too. And, and just with COVID lately, we've, we've mostly all been from home. Um, but over half our team is just remote across Canada and the US. Um, so equipment we use kind of reflects that remote work environment. Um, so we use a lot of like team collaboration tools like Google Docs, Google Drive. Um, Slack is our main method of communication. Um, it's basically like an email replacement, like chat app. It's kind of like Discord, which I'm sure uh, most kids are familiar with. And then to build software, you have to use software. So we develop on you know, computers like Macs and uh, we actually have gaming PCs to train machine learning models. You need, you need pretty powerful GPUs to run some of the uh, experiments that we're working on with AI. And we use Python programming language to actually build our software. And then there's various other libraries and tools that we use to develop the product. Um, but our equipment and kind of spaces are all geared towards, you know, working remotely and, and kind of functioning as a remote team. So some of the rewards of, of being a startup founder, like for me, number one is just like building something from the ground up that, that benefits people. Like it's just, it's really cool to just like have built something from the proof of concept stage to the stage where hospitals are actually buying and using it. Um, and that, that really is like the best way to be motivated is just to, to work on something that, that you like doing. Um, we have a great team. Um, that's another reward of, of doing this. I've, I've been able to kind of hire directly like all the people that I want to work with. Um, so we all get along very well. And even working remotely, we, we find everyone's kind of motivated and engaged. And we have the, those systems in place to, to communicate effectively. Uh, and that's, it's just really rewarding that way. Uh, being my own boss is awesome. It'd be very hard to go back to a nine to five office job. Um, just being able to set my own priorities and um, you know, work on things that, that I need to at my own pace, that kind of thing is, is, is really great. And then learning every day is a, is a big reward too. Like there's just never a dull moment. Every day is different. You're always dealing with, with a new issue or putting out fires, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's always engaging and, and rewarding that way. Uh, there's certainly challenges though. So I think number one for me early on was, was work-life balance. So I, like I said, we built most of this before we even quit our full-time job. So, uh, there was probably like 80 hour work weeks in there where we're doing a nine to five, uh, normal job and then coming home and, and putting time into Limbus. Um, and even today, you know, as a startup founder, you're expected to put in well over 40 hours a week to make things work. And, and you just kind of have to accept that. Um, but it doesn't, at the same time, it doesn't really feel like work because um, this, this is something that, that, like I said, you build from the ground up and you're motivated yourself to, to work on as much as possible. And uh, you're, you're realizing the, the rewards every day. Um, there is a challenge for us in managing a remote team. So just keeping people connected and making sure that we're maintaining like a good culture. Uh, I think that's a challenge that a lot of companies are facing right now. Um, but we're trying to trying to get better at that. And, and maybe as COVID kind of uh, goes away here, we'll, we'll be able to, to do a better job of bringing people together in person uh, and kind of balancing that, that remote, work, remote work lifestyle. Uh, a big challenge is just stress. So I've got to manage like many, many things at once. I'm always worried about you know, running out of money or um, some new problem that's ar arisen. So you really have to just be able to, to take the stress of, of building and, and running a business if, if you're in this. Uh, and then time management is a big one for me. Just how to, there's not ever enough time in a day. And like I said, I, I'm conscious about that work-life balance now. I don't want to work like 80 hours a week. So how do I manage my time effectively? And if I can't manage my time, like who do I need to hire to, to help me with you know, some specific area? Uh, but in general, it's very rewarding. And uh, I would, wouldn't rather be doing anything else. Um, so salary is what I take a, talk a bit about salary and benefits here. Um, so as a startup founder, like expect to make between zero and like $70,000. <laughs> I've never seen a higher salary than that in Saskatchewan. And, and many startup founders will, will not take a salary until uh, like years later when the company is actually making significant revenue. But kind of the, the rule of thumb for, for startups is you want to take enough salary so that you don't have to worry about starving or paying bills. And uh, that specifically comes from like investors. So once you have an investor in your business, they, they don't want you to be worrying about money. So they'll, they'll give you a salary that's just enough to cover you know, your, your basic lifestyle. But you're not in this for the money uh, until like years down the line, potentially ever. Um, there's, there's really no guarantee of, of like monetary reward. 
Um, the reward basically is like the ownership that you have and you may be able to take a higher salary down the road if, if you have the revenue to pay yourself. Um, benefits, the benefits of working for a startup are, are pretty awesome. Um, this goes for employees too. So typically like unlimited sick days and really good vacation policies. Um, pensions, a tough one. There's usually no pension in a, in a startup. Uh, founders won't get anything other than you know, the, the equity or, or stock that they already own. Uh, sometimes employees will get stock options or, or equity instead, which is basically, you know, a piece of ownership of the company. But again, there's like no guarantee that that's going to be worth anything. And it's, it's much less um, guaranteed than like an actual pension. Um, nowadays, some startups are, are putting together group RSPs and some other ways to, to save for the future. So that's something that we're looking at too. Um, and then for work hours, like I said, for founders, it's 40 plus hours a week for sure. And for our employees, we try to keep them at around 40 hours a week and we, we try not to, to work them too hard. So yeah, that's, that's background on Limits AI and um, on some opportunities in the, the tech industry and, and I guess some of the challenges and rewards of being a startup founder. Uh, I guess we'll open it up to, to Q&A now. Oh, John, I am totally starstruck with you and what you've accomplished here. You know, we always think that, you know, Saskatchewan doesn't have these kind of opportunities, but you've definitely shown us what can happen. Um, a couple of questions for you. Where do you see your company going? Um, I mean, it, it looks like in the past five years you've done, you know, you're in Canada, you're in the U.S. Um, what's your end goal? Is that even a question that you could answer? What when you meet with your your um, parties? What what what's the hip hip hurrah kind of you know? What are you telling people? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, like I said, we never really we never got into this with a plan. Like I still don't think our we have a plan for the for the future. Um, like for us, we're really just focused on just expanding like and and expanding like our reach. So what what countries that we're we're able to sell in? So getting through those regulatory approval uh, roadblocks. And then we're starting to look at like new products now. Like I think right now we're focused on just like a very small niche of um, radiation therapy, but there's, there's definitely like applications for this technology in radiology and like diagnosing disease and um, even just other areas of, of uh, medicine. So that's kind of where, where I see us going. I don't think we'll stick to just radiation therapy forever. Um, we'll start looking at, you know, other, verticals for, for the product to expand into. And um, I think we'll just continue to build, you know, products that fit our area of expertise. Yeah, that it's, like I said, I, I'm just amazed at what you've accomplished and, and just, you know, where this product can go. It just, you're just hitting the, the first rung on that ladder, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and I, why, why Limbus? How did that name come to be? Because I think when students are thinking of starting companies, founder companies, whatever, where did that name come from? So I, I should probably know this, but I, Joshua came up with it. I think it's, it's, it's a play on like the limbic system of the brain. And I think that's responsible for something to do with vision. So it's kind of like a hidden meaning, uh, like, like we're analyzing images and something, you know, related to the limbic system. Oh, so cool. So cool. Uh, I'll open it up to my other um, facilitators that are online right now. Any questions from them? Just to, I think, uh, Renette, you did said it real well, starstruck, because that's, uh, that's pretty impressive stuff uh, all around. I just think of, from the career aspect, I think I, some words that come to mind, these are more comments and questions that to me, it looks like there was a lot of sacrifice by yourself, uh, time and, and, and potential income. And, the passion and the challenge is that what kind of drives you like is to, to do this because I, I, I think for young people that are going in this way they, they might say like if i'm not making you know money as much money right off the bat it maybe i shouldn't do this kind of thing but what what drives the the direction that you're going um yeah i i've always just been like a i i kind of just need like that engagement i think to like be be happy and like be successful so so uh, even like when I was working uh, as like a full-time engineer at a nine to five, like I was building iPhone applications in my spare time and I was kind of filling my time <laughs> with uh, things anyways. So I, I just like, I think I just thrive under the engagement of like working on like a great idea. Um, and that, that kind of, that's kind of what drives me fundamentally. Um, I think I'm lucky that I, we live in Saskatchewan, like cost of living is lower. 
I think it'd be harder to do something like this in like Toronto or Vancouver, where, you know, rent and housing prices are crazy. Um, like you're, you're probably going to have to work a part-time job, uh, you know, if you're not taking a salary. Um, but in Saskatchewan, like the cost of living is relatively low and we have everything we need here to, to be successful and like build a company like this uh, with all the benefits of, you know, lower cost of living. And um, yeah, I think that's kind of how we got here. Good. That's awesome. Uh, I've had some uh, personal experience with cancer, not myself personally, but, you know, with parents and as recently as a couple of years ago with my mom. Um, so what happened as a, as a potential patient, uh, where does that fit into the medical world? Um, when you meet with your doctor, is this technology told to them or is it just part of that, um, you know, that patient um, consultation that happens? That's a really good question. So um it's not really a patient facing technology um not yet at least it's it's and i'm not sure how i'm not i'm not actually sure how much uh, education the patient has in like the cancer uh like radiation therapy planning process um but right now like this technology is kind of behind the scenes and like purely a tool for the clinicians to to save them time um and and it, it doesn't like i mentioned like the the technology is not at the point where there's no like oversight from a doctor. So they, they really like will run Limbus and they'll review every single output of Limbus and they'll edit it and make sure that it's um, you know optimal for that particular patient. Um, so in that sense, like the doctor is still fully responsible for what this technology is doing and how it's being used in the clinic. I just think that as if I was a patient, just knowing that you know you're targeting just the cancer and not literally the eyeball. Yeah, I, sure. I think that would just make put so many different levels of ease when I went through this with my, my mom years ago, a couple years ago. I just, I think that really does need to become part of your package. It's just that awareness on the patient's part. Uh, but like I said, I think you're just on that first step of, of, a, of a ladder right now. And it, mm -hmm. the growth is just going to be phenomenal. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Um, any other questions right now? I just want to compliment you and thank you for the work that you're doing. It's going to make a big difference in uh, a lot of people's lives. And I, I admire the passion. Um, thank you. As yeah, somebody who's affected by cancer, it's much appreciated. Thanks. I appreciate it. Great. So on that note, I think, um, again, we'd like to thank you on behalf of our team at RDIEC. Um, and I know that the, this, um, is going to be viewed by many interested students. So thanks again, John. Great, yeah, no problem, I'm happy to do it.